The princely house of Massimo is historically one of the great aristocratic families of Rome, renowned for its influence on the politics, the church and the artistic heritage of the city. Legendary Origins The Massimo family is sometimes referred to as one of the oldest noble families in Europe, according to the Augustan historian Onofrio Panvinio in his work De Gente Maxima of 1556. The family descends in the male line from the ancient Gens Fabia or Maximi of Republican Roman from Quintus Fabius Maximus, called Cunctator. When asked by Napoleon whether the family descended from Fabius Maximus, the then Prince Massimo famously replied, Genis arise en fa la prova, se un brut qui ni court que de puis du sense en est dans notre famille. The Massimo family is also said to have provided two popes to the Catholic Church, both saints, Pope Anastasius I, who denounced the originist heresy, and Pope Pascal I, who resisted the Frankish kings and was involved in one of the earliest attempts to Christianize Scandinavia. History the current family's better documented history traces back to a Massimo who flourished c. 950, and is identified in the person of Leo de Maximize by 1012. Thereafter the family grew in influence among the Roman barons, and played a considerable part in the history of the city in the Middle Ages, producing numerous cardinals, ambassadors, and civil and military leaders. Massimo Massimo served as Rome's chief conservator, a post held by several subsequent members of the family. Luca Massimo was granted the title Baron di Pistoza in 1544 and Fabrizio Camelio Massimo of the Arsley branch of the family became Marquis di Rocca Secca in 1686, both titles heritable by primogeniture. Two branches descended from sons of Angela. Massimo, who became first Lord of Intrafiamara in 1520, that of Tiberio, whose descendants became Dukes di Rignano and Calcutta and died out in 1907, and that of Fabrizio Massimo, who obtained the Lordship of Arsley in 1574. Massimiliano Camillo Massimo of the latter line was granted the title Prince di Arsili, heritable by primogeniture by Pope Leo XII in 1826. His grandson, Carlo, third Prince di Arsili was made a Roman prince in 1854, which title also descends by primogeniture. His son Don Francesco, Prince Massimo became postmaster of the post Vatican, and his grandson Don Leone, Prince Massimo became Duke di Antiqui Corrado in 1904 by a vuncular session. Another grandson of the first Prince di Arsili, Don Filippo Massimo, inherited the fortune and adopted the marital surname of the prince's eldest daughter Donna Giuseppina Massimo, who was the widow and heiress of Ottavio Lancelotti, Prince di Loro. Although the senior line of Don Filippo's descendants retains the Lancelotti surname and title, his younger son Don Luigi, resumed the paternal name in the combination of Massimo Lancelotti, and his descendants flourish, having been granted the Italian title Prince di Prosedi in 1932. Although ancient and powerful, the post-medieval Massimo were not of sovereign family, yet heads of the family and other members contracted a remarkable number of marriages with members and descendants of reigning dynasties into the late 20th century, consistently so after the marriage in 1765 of papal postmaster Camillo Francesco Massimo, Marquis di Roccasecca, to Barbara Savelli Palombara, 
heir as to a handsome fortune. The son, the first Prince di Arsili, Massimiliano Camillo Massimo, married Cristina di Sassonia in 1796, daughter of Xavier of Saxony, Prince of Poland and Lithuania, a younger son of King Augustus III of Poland. Massimiliano's son, the second Prince Camillo Vittorio Massimo, married Princess Maria of Savoy Carignano, became the first king of a united Italy in 1861. The third Prince di Arsili, Don Camillo Carlo Massimo, where Donna Francesca Lucci Palli, a half sister of the French legitimist pretender Henry, Count of Chambord, through her mother Princess Maria Carolina of Bourbon Sicily daughter of the Neapolitan King Francis I of the Two Sicilies and widow of Charles X of France's assassinated heir, Charles Ferdinand, Duke of Berry. They had two sons, Francesco Massimo, fourth Prince di Arsili, who married Donna Eleonora Brancaccio in 1895, and Don Fabrizio Massimo who, in 1895 had been made Prince di Roviano and Duke di Antiqui Corrado by Italian royal decree, and in 1897 married Princess Beatrice of Bourbon, daughter of the Carlist pretender to the French and Spanish thrones, Carlos, Duke of Madrid, Don Fabrizio and the Infanta had no sons, and in 1904 he ceded the dukedom of Antiqui Corrado to his nephew Don Leon Massimo, son of his elder brother the fourth Prince di Arsili. Don Leon also became fifth Prince di Arsili in 1943, having in 1935 Wednesday Princess Maria Adelaide of Savoy Genoa, daughter of Prince Thomas, Duke of Genoa and first cousin of then reigning Victor Emmanuel III of Savoy, King of Italy. The Massimo tradition of royal intermarriage continued when, in 1989, Carlo Massimo, sixth Prince di Arsili married Dona Eliza Rosario de Moscoso y Estania, daughter of Pedro, Duke de Montemar, whose paternal great-grandmother was H.R.H. the Infanta Luisa Teresa de Bourbon Cadiz, daughter of H.R.H. the Infante Francisco de Paula of Spain by her marriage to Jose Osorio de Moscoso, Duke de Cesa. The princely family is represented by Fabrizio Massimo Brancaccio, Prince di Arsili and Prince di Trigliano, and Stefano Massimo, Prince di Rocca Secchi di e. I. Volsci, whose heir is Don Valerio Massimo. On 21 May 2009 Prince Valerio reached the summit of Mount Everest. Significance The family were major patrons of the arts, with the brothers Pietro and Francesco Massimo acquiring fame by protecting and encouraging the German printers Swainheim and Panarts, who came to Rome in 1467, where the first printed books in Italy were produced in the Massimo Palace. In the 17th century Cardinal Camillo II Massimo was famous as the patron of both Velas Quez and Poussin. In the 16th century the Massimo were the richest of the Roman nobles. The Palazzo Massimo Alcalon in Rome was built by the celebrated Sienese architect Baldassare Peruzzi by order of Pietro Massimo, on the ruins of an earlier palace destroyed in the sack of Rome in 1527. The curved façade is built on and dictated by the foundations of the stands for the Stadium Odeon of the Emperor Domitian. The interior ceilings and vestibules are elaborately ornamented with rosettes and coffered roofs. The entrance ceiling is decorated with a fresco by Daniele da Volterra who represented life of Fabius Maximus. The chapel on the second floor was a room where the 14-year-old Paolo Massimo, son of Prince Fabrizio Massimo, was recalled briefly to life by St. Philip Neri on March 16, 1583. The interior of the palace is open to public only on the day each year when the family receive the cardinals and other high officials to honor the event. 
Other notable events in the Palace of the 16th century include various intrafamilial murders. The palace is considered one of the most important early Renaissance Mannerist masterpieces and remains the principal residence of the family, along with the Massimo Castle in Arsili.